Welcome to Roleplay Roulette, where we take the bullets for you. Wow, we have come a long way since our first attempt at launching Roleplay Roulette. Seems like only yesterday that we recorded and released our first attempt at an RPG review. Ah, uh, memories. I don't know, guys. I don't remember it going over so well. <laughs> what are you talking about? It was awesome! I remember it like it was yesterday. <laughs> Dear God, we were terrible. Is that even normalized? Why are there so many jump cuts? I forgot we didn't even have a boom mic back then. Okay, well that's no good. It's no wonder that video is not considered part of the RPR canon. Yeah, it's referred to as episode zero for a reason. But wait, that means that we haven't technically reviewed rifts yet. <gasps> we haven't technically reviewed rifts yet! Oh, here we go. We're gonna talk about rifts today, and we're gonna do it right this time. Bigger sets, better sound, fully realized skits! Calm your tits, Fox. I get to talk about rifts today. You tell the world to get a room. We're doing it in the streets. I'm dying to see what you cooked up for me, so let's see those character sheets. I made a big bomb. I'm a high plains drifter and a rugged survivor. I may be long in tooth and rough in the eyes, but I'm an experienced and proven scout. Sounds like you put a lot of thought into this character. I'm proud of you for taking the roleplay route instead of going for raw power. Wait, is this class weak? No backsies. Can I see your character next? I'm a crazy. Crazy! I was a geek who couldn't get a date, so I turned to psyche destroying cybernetic mutilation. Now I'm a psychic super athlete and a bona fide heartbreaker with multiple personalities. Dark passengers bring all the boys to the yard. What a coincidence, I made it crazy too. No, my boys! I don't know about that. Doubling up seems to promote competition. You don't have anything else? No backups in your character binder? Well, I do have one other, but you already said no. I told you, the 12th level's Leyline Walker is too powerful for this campaign. That's fine. Doubling up won't be a problem. I think you'll see that our characters are different enough that they won't step on each other's toes. You'll have to, and you two will have to get along. What the hell is this? You have the Black Sword of Stifon? Just a little keepsake from my trip to the Land of the Damned. Power object fixation? Psychotic aversion to men? Psychotic aversion to women? Oh yeah, I just rolled on the random tables until I had all of them. Voyeurism? Phobia versus intimacy? Necrophilia? On the tables from Palladium First Edition. No, what were you thinking? This is unplayable. Well, I guess the only other option is... All right, fine. Wow. If there's a challenge for a review, it's the setting in Rifts. True, Rifts setting is a tough thing to talk about concisely, because it's Brobdingnagian in scope. Rifts is founded on the premise of a world that has rebuilt itself after a cataclysmic apocalypse. To explain the setting, we must go into its history. You see, back in the old days of man, humanity had built a golden age of prosperity and science. Humans lived for nearly two centuries, solved their issues with hunger, and generally had a gigantic backyard boogie. Or at least that was the case in the first world. Either way, this all came to a crashing end when the cataclysm happened. All that is known to the modern age is that for some reason magic returned to the world with a bang. The surge of energy woke the Earth's magical ley lines and caused them to rage like Andrew W.K.'s Twitter. That is to say, things got broken. Specifically the fabric of both time and space. Take that, subspace! Where the lines of power met and surged against each other, reality frayed and gateways into other dimensions were opened. These, then, were the eponymous rifts. The current setting is hundreds of years later. The world is still walked by humanity, but they are joined by aliens, demons, and supernatural entities. Psychic potential is returned, as has magic. Golden Age technology has been recovered from the ashes and retro-engineered. The result is a world where anything is possible. And we do mean anything. If you want your monster summoning elf to hang out with your girlfriend's genetically engineered half-canine super soldier while you adventure with your buddy's cybernetically enhanced psychic martial artist, then Rifts is what you'll want to see. You know, I have my reservations about Rifts, things about it that I find flawed, anachronistic, or that just rub me the wrong way. The setting, however, it's not one of those things. It's huge, expansive, and inclusive. It's full to bursting with interesting ideas and novelties, and it positively brims with adventures, 
character concepts and stories to tell. Even if you somehow can't find what you're looking for in riffs, the setting provides a ready-made avenue to homebrew to your heart's content. Absolutely anything you can come up with could easily pop out of one of the rifts. True, it can seem a little unfocused. Palladium's everything but the kitchen sink and oh what the hell a kitchen sink approach to world building gives the setting a wealth of flexibility, but it can feel a bit scattershot and disjointed to me. Nevertheless, Rifts presents a campaign setting that I just can't imagine getting bored with. The setting gets a solid chamber from me. The setting is fantastic, and the breadth of the world never ceases to amaze me. The story is very engrossing, each zone has its own unique appeal, and it has every flavor you could possibly want and then some. The setting is probably the biggest draw and gets an easy chamber from me. It's genuinely the only game I can think of that includes this much variety without becoming an unworkable mess. There's a lot of material to cover, and by a lot, I mean a lot of detail put into every part of the world you can imagine visiting. Want to play an elf that uses druidic nature magic and communes with the lush and mystical vibrant forest? We have that. Want to play a wasteland scavenging super soldier who wanders a twisted hellscape of dried bones and fallen buildings? We have that. Want to play a mystically trained ninja with magical tattoos that allow you to shapeshift your cybernetically enhanced dragon body when you aren't riding your bionically upgraded Tyrannosaurus Rex? Okay, that one's a little bit crazy. No game will support- WE HAVE THAT! Townsfolk run screaming as the Coalition Patrol starts moving in. The commander is neither fooled by your cover story, nor pleased with your unregistered cybernetics, and he recognizes you as an obvious leyline walker. His skelebots move in to flank you and the Mark V closes in. Alright. Book it, fellas. Talks of breaking down. I hurl two grenades at the Mark V before leaping backwards, doing four somersaults, and landing parallel to the party. CRAZY! I am... Um... Eyeball of filler? Oh, this is so awesome. Walkers and vagabonds suck. I love not having to work to be the center of attention. Oh, you think so? I cast Wall of Illusion, creating illusion that we all run to the west. All right, they believe your illusion and pursue. The Skelebots follow their human orders. Cool, as they follow my illusion, I cast Carpet of Adhesion in front of their lines. I fire up my personal force field and run ahead to distract them. I know it won't last long, but I can take advantage of the cover. I'm useful! I take advantage of the distraction, and on my next turn, I move behind them and cast Shockwave. And the gods declare in burning banners the reason I didn't want this character. Your shockwave successfully knocks all of the Skelebots, the foot soldiers, even the APC, directly onto your carpet of adhesion. They're all stuck fast, most of them face down, and have no way to free themselves from your spell. Bullshit. I, uh, I didn't know you could do that. I kind of want all of the attention back now, please. The Rift system is decidedly old school, and it carries with it a lot of habits that have kind of gone out of style among younger gamers. It is, however, fairly simple. The engine uses a simple d20 roll to determine success in combat, with an attack roll opposed by a defender's dodge roll, and so on. Skill ratings vary from around 15% to a hard limit of 98%, with success or failure determined by a roll of percentile dice. The most notably unique aspect of Rifts is the Mega Damage system. Mega damage is dealt by high-tech weapons or magic, and can only be handled by armor made of high-tech, futuristic polymers, magic, or a creature that is supernaturally durable. So the point is, wear armor whenever you can, because you don't want any part of a surprise mega damage attack. Character creation is very slow. I've noticed by the time a character is finished, the player is generally too exhausted to do much else, but I kind of like that. It puts the kibosh on a particular type of problem player that really chaps me. You know the guy that comes up with 150 billion characters? Half of which he wrote up after the game started and is already established? If I have a complaint, it's the skill system. I feel that it's both too granular and oversimplified. Skills aren't really a problem if you don't over-involve them, and the system gets a chamber. While the system's usually pretty cohesive, it's also a great big bag of math. Most of this math, however, takes place during character creation, which means you only really have to deal with it once. But fuck, deal with it you shall. Bring scratch paper to jot down all your bonuses from your OCC, your skills, your stats, your gear, just so you can plug in all the numbers before you roll out the door. Chamber from me. Palladium's games all use the same core engine, for better or worse, and this unified system creates a huge amount of interconnectivity between their many and varied game titles. It also means you only have to learn one set of rules to play virtually anything they publish, which is a huge advantage. The thing is, to me, Palladium's engine feels a little old. To be fair, it is. Some of my gaming circle weren't even alive when these rules were written. 
and it shows. Its character generation, in my experience, is something of a chore, and when I finish a character for Rifts, I'm usually too tired of looking at Rifts to want to play it anymore. Add to this the seemingly endless modifiers, wildly imbalanced character options, and overuse of random tables, it's just not my style. System gets a bullet from me, but a respectful one. RPG aesthetics have moved on in a different direction nowadays, and it's one I wholeheartedly prefer, but I have to respect Palladium for plugging away and making it work after all these years. The tavern is bustling and the stories of your success over the Coalition Patrol are the talk of the day. You, especially, have the attention of all the eligible talent in the room. Even the boys? Yes, his shockwave brought all the boys to the yard, and his carpet of adhesion kept them there with no saving throw. I laugh and buy drinks for the house to make sure that they remember their savior, and then I'm going to take off my mask so that they can gaze on the beauty of my potion-enhanced face. Upon removing your mask, you realize a newcomer has slipped through the door. He's showing you the business end of a CS-18 sidearm. It's Wheeler, who is wearing the tattered scraps of Coalition armor, screams, FOR MANKIND, as he fires. Roll to dodge. Minus ten due to proximity. Roll to one. The last thing you see is a blinding light, and then everything goes black, as your pretty potion face disappears in a cloud of red mist. You are dead. I tackle the assassin, turn his own gun on him, and fire. Then I cradle the wizard's body close to mine as I scream no with the unforgiving heavens. What the hell? You have six cents. Why didn't you warn me about the ambush? Oh, crap. Sorry. He's right. Would you like a chance to stop that shot? It's your right of way. No, I think I'm good. I'll begin weeping and claim he was my father. Sympathy, boys. Wait, holy shit. It's my chance to be the hero. I still have one wish remaining from when that guy rewarded me for saving her priest from the dinosaur. She has to have bring you back to life. Whoops, uh, it's 2 a.m. Uh, go and wrap it there. I'll text you all your experience totals. Aww. Gosh, support for riffs? Well, let's see. 35 world books, 15 dimension books, 3 conversion books, and 19 source books, not including the Chaos Earth line. Holy shit! Also, a fully staffed and constantly attended forum filled with thousands of fans and dedicated, in-company staff, an autonomous website with free supplemental downloads, and a Facebook presence maintained by the game designers themselves. There's also the price point. Palladium is easily the least expensive company in the industry, maintaining a lower price per book than any other major producer. Where Rifts falls short is the presentation of the books themselves. The pages are durable and well printed, but the art consists almost entirely of black and white line art of varying quality. The books have some questionable layout choices, and a strange tendency to reprint materials from other Palladium titles. Seriously, you'll often find everything from artwork to whole sections of text just copied and pasted from other books. And Jesus fucking Christ, there were so many books for this game! Palladium staff are some of the friendliest, most helpful people I've ever had the honor of meeting, and whether you're at a con, or you're on their Facebook, or you're writing in their forums, they are always willing to assist and even just chat with fans. Support is definitely a chamber for me. Sure, there are a wealth of supplements, world books, dimension books, and all that. There is, in fact, a staggering amount of material available for this game, and Palladium even publishes a quarterly magazine, The Rifter, that might as well be a mini-supplement unto itself. It's a little frightening how prolific they are, honestly. I'm gonna go ahead and give support a chamber, largely because it is unthinkable to me to drop a bullet on a company for working this hard. The only beef I have with Palladium books is their tendency to suffer from cover curl. Occasionally, they'll wrinkle up if they're exposed to high heat or humidity. Other than that, the support for Rifts is incredible. Put all this together with the books being the most affordable in the industry and multiply it by customer loyalty that Palladium has demonstrated. That equals a roaring chamber. So that's Rifts by Palladium Books, LLC. Again! Are you happy now? Can we stop talking about riffs? <laughs> Not by a long shot. Over the next couple of weeks, we're going to be releasing a series of videos about riffs supplements, its character creation, and a tutorial on combat. Subscribe to see them, and pay attention because our next review is coming a lot sooner than you think. Until next time, we're Roleplay Roulette.